Kia ora, my name is Russ Flatt. Um, I'm a photographic artist. Um, my iwi is Ngāti Kahununu. I was born in Singapore. Um, I currently live in Piha, Auckland, New Zealand. I won the Vermont residency through the Wallace Arts Trust in um, 2015 with a work that was from um, my show Nationals at Tim Melville Gallery in 2014, which is my first solo gallery show. Um, the title of the work was Outside Edge, um, and the prize uh, from winning uh, that residency was a three-month residency in uh, Johnson, Vermont, in the United States, which I went on last year in 2016 from the beginning of July to the end of September. Because the work I'd been ma making is so narrative um, and memory driven, um, it was important to me that I be authentic to my practice and to myself. Um, so making similar work in a place I'd never been to was very important. Um, my previous, the previous work I'd been making um, was talking to identity and our perception of identity, uh, looking at um, role play and how people perceive us. Um, so being in Vermont and going to Vermont, um, I had no memories. I wanted to make new memories. Uh, therefore, it was important to make a new body of work that was um, really, really new um, and really groundbreaking in terms of my practice. I wanted to explore something that was me making work out of my comfort zone. Ah, yeah, the residency uh, was in a small town called Johnson. 2,000 people lived there. It was very small. There was a, um, or there is a, um, uh, a university there and the residency which houses um, 50, 50, um, 50 different artists um, per month. Um, visual artists, sculptors, painters, photographers, poets and writers. Um, so there was a really interesting cross-section of people within the small town. Um, the town itself had um, a supermarket, it had a bar, a restaurant, a hairdresser's, an art store, and that was about it. A service station that sold wine, which was very handy. Yeah. When I first got there, I, I just decompressed and kind of found my bearings. Um, I found the residency itself quite, uh, quite confronting um, in a way, in that you had to really be on because we ate three meals a day together and that, that could be quite intense. Um, so I would skip breakfast, just kind of turn up early for lunch and, and, and have dinner there. but. Um, I met a lot of the subjects that are within the show um, at the residency, particularly um, writers. It seemed the writers were really interested in being part of it, especially the, the black poets, um, female black poets. Um, and what was interesting to me is that they kind of clocked me when uh, during meal time, and they kind of, you know, saw this this brown guy that they couldn't really figure out where he was from and then of course I opened my mouth and then they were like whoa wow he's like this gay brown guy here at dinner where does he fit in so they kind of took me over their wing and and they actually were um, they were actually part of the beginning of the process of making the work they offered um, themselves to be photographed um, and yeah, it was a process. It was really me just letting them know that they could show or not show as much or as little, little as they wanted within the landscape. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't about sexual. It wasn't it wasn't about sexuality. It was more about empowerment. Yeah, I arrived there during summer. Um, I asked if I could go during summer. Um, and I put an ad on Craigslist 
um, looking for people that would like to be part of the project. Um, so I was very open in the way that I wanted uh, people to approach me so that um, it wasn't a casting. So my idea was that I would, would not say no to anybody that was interested in being part of it. Um, so race, gender, um, body shape, that was unimportant to me. Yeah, it was about, about me being open to the process in every way possible. I started researching um, nude versus naked and being naked in, in Vermont where, where the legal, supposedly legal parts of the state I was in, um, where you could go um, to bathe nude, naked. Um, and so it was more about the subjects feeling confident um, and secure in themselves in a private setting and being naked um, rather than, the law didn't really come into it. It was just something that I researched later that kind of um, anchored the project in, in an interesting kind of political space, I guess. I like the idea of creating this kind of other world, this kind of utopian ideal where, you know, they, the people in the photographs, it's, you're not sure why they're there, you're not sure if they are there by themselves or they're there to meet people or there's some kind of interaction happening. Um, so that play on um, the diversity of people within the, within the photographs and what they're doing was kind of interesting to me, yeah. I, I don't shoot much, I kind of had the location sorted, knew who I was photographing, knew, you know, was kind of like judging the light during the day, um, and then it was actually just about kind of shooting, putting it up in the studio, seeing where I'd gone, seeing where I needed to go, trying a few different options, and then just, just leaving it. It wasn't, it wasn't about shooting, 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 shooting. I shot large format 4x5, and I shot digitally. Um, and I have to say that I preferred the digital files, which I never thought I'd hear myself saying, but yeah, I did. Um, I just preferred the colours. I felt like there was more information in the shadows, which I, I guess is how digital is, has kind of progressed from when it, when it kind of first came into play. Um, and that, that was quite kind of getting over that that kind of film stigma, you know? It's like, you do an art project, oh, it has to be on film. Well, no, it doesn't have to be on film. It just, you know, you choose the medium that's right for, for your project. So that was, that was good for me to kind of work through that too. The Night Bus series, would, they would, that was shot on digital, but it's the, the 5DSR camera, which has a huge raw file, so you know, you can blow them up to 40 by 60 and they're, they're still like as sharp as a tack and there's no, no noise. Um, and once I realized that the, those cameras had that capability, it kind of made sense for me to just, just kind of work, work that, work that kind of, um, that work that kind of format. Um, I think Nationals was the first time I kind of played with that camera. And I think working with those narrative constructs, because they're so produced, it's, um, and there's so many factors in, in place in terms of um, the location, how long you have that location for, um, how long you have the talent for. And so it's really important to, for me to storyboard everything and have a really kind of like strict um, way of working that enables me to um, produce what I need. And I always go into a project 
kind of expecting more from um, the time that I have with people and I usually get what I want and need um, but it, it, it's, it's quite kind of pressure cooker whereas with this uh, project in Vermont I had time and space and freedom and light and it was um, it was a whole different way of being and working yeah. um, I mean I like people and so I, I I feel like I can work with people kind of quite instinctively um, and that just comes through years of working with people um, and I think what I've taken from the commercial photography through to my fine art practice is producing, getting things done and knowing how to produce things and knowing how to ask for things, like getting things. Oh, I need a bus. Okay, I'll just rent a bus. That's fine. You know, and knowing how to get a deal with that bus, you know, and not really settling for no <laughs> that often. <laughs> I really, I really went back to university to do my masters um, for myself and I, I knew the work that I was making felt right to me and if, and if anybody else kind of got it then that would be great but it was purely for my own personal satisfaction making work that spoke to me and, and told my kind of story in an abstract way. So just before I left to go to Vermont on June 12th um, the Orlando nightclub shootings happened and that had such a huge effect on LGBTQI communities all over the world and you know my husband and I felt it really really strongly here and it felt like we had stepped back you know 50 years or 40 years or something um, and it just really kind of resonated with me and so you know I, I guess I had that in the back of my mind when I went to Vermont um, and I think because of the political climate at that moment in time in the States um, there was the presidential election happening and you know the rhetoric, rhetoric around that was that you know nobody thought that Trump would could possibly um, become the president of the United States and so you know it was just um, kind of laughed about really but look what happened it kind of it's changed everything and it's a really really sad sad time for minorities in America and what I think what we'll see is everything that's happening there will start trickling down even to New Zealand and that that is um, it's really heartbreaking yeah um, my Facebook feed is very political um, through meeting a lot of different artists and writers at the residency. Um, and there's a, a really interesting uh, Facebook feed that I'm connected to called Pantsuit Nation, which is um, all about women and their empowerment and them talking about their stories and their place in the world and and what's happening to them personally in America, um, and it, yeah, it's it's scary. People are people are scared for the future, and you know I think there are a lot of people all over the world that are hoping that impeachment is soon.